All right, everyone, we start off today, of course, with the big news out of Beirut over in Lebanon, which is that Israel conducted a drone strike and actually killed Salah al arori uh, He was considered an international terrorist, one of the uh, founders, actually, of the uh, military wing of Hamas, and so that's, uh, that's a pretty high-level kill. The problem being that a bunch of other people died in the, and were injured in the explosion. Now, originally, we were led to believe uh, well, first Israel came out and wouldn't confirm or deny that it was involved. Uh, we, we now understand Israel did conduct the, gro the drone strike, so this was a targeted attack. Uh, and also that originally um, it was supposedly in, in like a Hamas-controlled territory within Beirut. We're now finding that it was actually like a little office with a bunch of cafes and, and apartments and shit, actually a, a fairly residential area that was actually hit, contrast with the original reporting. Uh, I mean, it's good that uh, Rory is dead, but the problem is, again, you, you created a bunch of dead civilians and injured civilians and, and structural damage to residential buildings and cafes and stuff uh, in the process of doing so. And so probably what happened is Israel was aware of his general location, the drones flying up, they happened to spot him, they say, yes or no, should I take the shot? And they said, yeah, uh, because it's a high profile target, don't bother waiting. We'll, we'll smooth over the collateral damage later. And this tends to be something that uh, world militaries do on a regular basis. Hell, the United States has done this before under multiple administrations. Well, I know that this is right next to an orphanage, but I think if I take this shot just right, I can get Osama bin Laden's niece. Well, uh, okay, well, we'll, we'll just uh, give, give us two minutes to uh, confer in the war room. And you're not allowed to fight in the war room, of course. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, some of you get the reference. Uh, so link in the description archived of course the real problem here is that it risks dragging lebanon uh into the war and israel effectively confirmed fairly early on that it was the the nation that took the shot as though anyone really had to guess uh, by saying well we won't confirm or deny uh that uh, that we were involved here but just know that whoever was responsible it was not an attack upon the state of lebanon well, I mean, you did just bomb foreign soil uh, with, with a drone. You may have had a good reason for it, but you did kill civilians as well. Lebanon generally tries to be reasonably neutral towards Israel, like the actual standing government there, as in combat with Hezbollah at times, although they pretty much openly operate and It'd be kind of difficult for, I think, the Lebanese military to actually, you know, destroy Hezbollah and or the Hamas cells that are in the country. So it's kind of an understandable, bizarre situation. Like the U.S. has guaranteed, like, you know, the Lebanese government and, and Israel kind of talks to them, but they're not really friends, but they're not also openly hostile towards each other. A very strange situation. The Levant has always had weird politics. Politics make very strange bedfellows, and that area is basically like a goddamn non-stop orgy. And so you get these weird arrangements going on, I would think. And this is, by the way, the first time that Israel has acted in Beirut uh, in almost half a decade. So uh, while there's a precedent of involvement by Israeli forces, sort of like when they bombed Syria's reactor and stuff like that, it's, it tends to be sporadic. Uh, but they decided to take the shot. I think the reason that they did that is that Netanyahu and the Israeli authorities realize that they've already sort of crossed a red line with regards to what's going on in Gaza, and so they're much more all-in than before. It's like the other day they're saying, well, Israel is withdrawing some troops from the Gaza Strip. Biden crowing about that as though, by the way, it was his idea. It's more like, hey, we've already killed several tens of thousands of people and leveled much of the urban development in this entire region. We no longer need as many troops because a lot of these people are just huddled in refugee centers incapable of even taking care of themselves it doesn't require as many soldiers anymore to guard the entire area because of that compacting of people people i think are reading into the withdrawal of some ground forces in gaza a little bit too much meanwhile that frees up uh, time and manpower and firepower to pivot to this kind of thing uh, to assassination drone strikes and so forth again another toy that hamas doesn't really have yeah they get some iranian drones and stuff like that little bit less sophisticated me thinks uh, just uh, just pointing that out there so al Arori is dead not gonna shed any tears for a dead terrorist which is literally what he is and when i see the east blockers saying no he's a freedom fighter or something uh, no uh, hamas don't give a shit about your freedom uh try going and doing the woke lgbtq plus map thing over in palestine and 
see how long you survive without getting tossed off an eight-story building. Uh, but I'm, I'm neutral in this in the sense that I don't back Israel or Palestine uh, in this conflict. And I, and I have to make that clear in every video on the topic that I make. The problem is that this crosses the border into Lebanon. This is not the Gaza Strip, etc. Hamas has leadership embedded in surrounding areas. While it's pragmatic to, for Israel, uh, militarily speaking, to take out those targets, when you do it in this manner, you end up with civilian casualties and damage to residential structures and so forth. You know, your local Turkish coffee cafe is now you know closed for renovation <laughs> because of the, the the damage from the debris from the blast. Um, you piss people off, and uh, inevitably, the problem in a war like this is, optically speaking, when you when you unleash that mass force against surrounding areas, Gaza now now Lebanon. Uh, although there have been strikes across the border a few times with Hezbollah anyway, uh, you risk alienating the local population. In, in a nutshell, what it basically is is nimbyism, almost. It's like, hey, uh, war is fine. Oh shit, a bomb landed in my backyard. Well, now I'm pissed about it. Uh, people can be like that in the United States. Uh, people had lost most of their war muster, and then 9-11 happens, and everyone, including people far away from New York City, all of a sudden they get afraid. And so uh, people in Beirut now will, will be upset, I'm sure. Apparently there's a general strike right now in Ramallah. Or Ramallah. I'm not sure which way it's pronounced. I'm a Vermonter. Fucking sue me. I think it's Ramallah, if I remember correctly. Uh, because of this uh, general strike uh, in protest and mourning for uh, Al Arori. Uh, I'm not sure why you would really mourn the dude necessarily, but at the same time I can't imagine the local population would mourn a strike on the IDF at the moment. That's the problem. It's already erupted into a regional war. The U.S. is basically at war with the Houthis. They're across the whole Arabian subcontinent. <laughs> They're over in Yemen. We're basically at war with them. We saw the Iranians strike a ship uh, only a couple of days ago with drones. Um, we're seeing more and more of this. The, the region is really heating up and people are not taking heed of how dangerous a situation it could possibly be. Again, if the Western world had proper military and executive leadership, I would sleep soundly tonight and say, huh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, the Iranians are rattling swords. A couple of terrorists got drone strike. Uh, some civilians got massacred. But, I mean, that's normal for the region. I would expect diplomacy to ensue. In fact, by now, I would expect the fighting would already have gone away. Like, let's say, if Trump were president of the United States, he would have held some sort of emergency meeting right off the bat. Biden instead does the waffling thing, and so the Israelis got themselves into a situation where they went so far that they're going to be diplomatically condemned anyway, and so now they no longer feel the same restraint that you would feel under normal situations. Like, okay, well, we don't really want to go further than this. We're going to get condemned. There'll be a UN meeting. We're going to have to send envoys and diplomats and shit around all these countries, and it's going to be a waste of goddamn time. But now... It looks like they no longer consider it a waste of time. It threatens a regional war, which would destabilize the world economy. While the world economy is already having some fucking terrible issues, uh, you may have noticed that. I mean, trade is being hazarded uh, in the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea right now uh, by, by both piracy and by uh, action by Houthi rebels. Iranians, the Iranians just floated one of their warships out there into the, uh, the sea lanes. Uh, they don't have an e enormous naval capability, but they do have a navy. It could cause a problem. And people are saying, well, it doesn't affect me. I don't care. Now, I may be neutral between Israel v. Palestine, but I do care about the situation because of all the shipping that goes through that region. Even if I didn't give a damn about the dead civilians, and I do, I don't want to see any you know, women and children dying or, or old men or anything like that. Uh, combatants can fight one another, in which they could uh, have a battlefield where they could hash it out, and uh, civilians would be far away from the blast zone. But uh, even if I didn't care about any of that, I do care economically about, well, the entire world, because it's already on the precipice. We forced that precipice with lockdownerism, first and foremost, and with bad decisions with regards to energy development and trade in general, uh, you know, uh, sort of a uh, the globalism is breaking down and uh, no I'd, I'd really rather you know be able to put some food on my table other than uh, ramen noodles and baked beans nothing wrong with baked beans but I can't really digest the ramen so you know uh, you need some uh, some caloric intake there otherwise I'll be even skinnier that's about all
Peace out.